Okay, good morning, uh, Director Kurth, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Rear Admiral Retired Sam Cox, uh, Director of the Naval History and Heritage Command, uh, and I too would like to add my respects to our two Battle of Midway veterans, uh, Colonel John Miniclear and Sergeant Ed Fox, uh, both United States Marine Corps. Seventy-five years ago, on the 4th of June, at this very hour, uh, Midway had just been attacked by 108 aircraft from four Japanese aircraft carriers. They had been on a six-month victory spree, and they expected to catch Midway Island by surprise. Uh, they, however, were surprised to find 3,000 heavily dug in and fortified U.S. Marines uh, who had made a pact among themselves that unlike what happened at Midway Island, no matter what, there would be no surrender at Midway Island. The Japanese were also surprised to find that of the 127 aircraft based at this island, uh, every one that could fly was already in the air. Uh, American Navy PBY Catalina flying boats had already found the Japanese carriers, uh, and one of them during the night had conducted a daring torpedo strike and hit a Japanese tanker, uh, the first shot to be hit by, by either side during the war, during, during the battle. Despite being outnumbered, uh, and heavily outclassed by the technologically superior Japanese fighters escorting the strike, the Marine fighters did not hesitate to go on attack and knock down several of the Japanese bombers before the Japanese fighters were able to turn the tables on them. Uh, in the end, almost all the Marine fighters were shot down or heavily damaged. Of the 28 on the island, only two were still in flyable condition afterwards. But the actions of the fighters along with the intense anti-aircraft fire from the Marines on the island here, hit almost half of the Japanese strike force. Uh, Eleven Japanese planes were shot down, uh, 14 were severely damaged, uh, none of whom would be available during the last stage of the battle uh, at a critical phase when the last ditch Japanese attempt to hit the United States carriers instead of having 18 torpedo bombers left on the carrier here you, they only had 10. Uh, and had the carrier USS Yorktown been hit by one more torpedo than she was, uh, she most likely would have gone down in minutes with most of her crew instead of staying afloat for two days. But also at this hour, the first U.S. aircraft to reach the Japanese carriers to conduct strikes originated from this island. Uh, six Navy TBF torpedo bombers uh, and four U.S. Army Air Force B-26 twin-engine bombers uh, proceeded on a direct line to the Japanese carriers and encountered 30 Japanese fighters. Uh, but despite the odds, not one of those aircraft turned away. Uh, in fact, the Japanese were shocked to discover that the defensive capability of those planes was very good, and the first planes to go down were two Japanese fighters, one shot down by our torpedo bombers, one by the B-26s. The Japanese discovered that it's extremely hard. These were new type aircraft that they had never encountered before, and they proved to be very resistant to battle damage. And the Japanese had to fly into their own shipboard anti-aircraft envelope before they started bringing down the U.S. bombers. Uh, two of the Navy torpedo planes got close enough to launch torpedoes at the carrier Hiryu, uh, and one launched torpedo at the uh, light cruiser Nagara. Uh, only one of those six aircraft survived to make it back to Midway Island. And of the four Army Air Force bombers, one was shot down, uh, two got off their torpedoes at the Japanese flagship, the carrier Akagi, uh, which was able to avoid them. Uh, but one of the bombers flew right over the Akagi's flight deck and strafed it with machine gun fire. And then the third B-26, whether it was uncontrollable or whether the pilot deliberately tried to hit the Akagi, missed the bridge of the Akagi by about 10 feet uh, and had it hit would have taken out Admiral Nagumo and his entire staff and decapitated the Japanese leadership. Uh, two of the B-26s made it back, uh, one of which was shot with more than 500 you know, holes in it. Those two events, the anti-aircraft fire and the torpedo bomber attack, convinced Admiral Nagumo that Midway, by surprise, was an extremely dangerous uh, adversary that had to be dealt with immediately. And as a result, he directed that his 107 plane reserve flight be rearmed with from anti-ship missiles to 
anti-ground, uh, anti-ship bombs and torpedoes to anti-ground bombs. Uh, at the time, he did not know that three U.S. aircraft carriers were operating northeast of Midway uh, and that two of them had already commenced flight operations uh, to send their strike aircraft towards his carriers and the third would commence operations shortly. Another wave of Marine bombers uh, and Air Force uh, B-17s flying from Midway Island uh, kept the Japanese carriers maneuvering radically uh, in order to avoid being hit. Uh, and as a result of the strikes from this island, the, the Japanese were unable to get their counter-strike ready uh, before the U.S. Car carrier planes uh, started coming in. And I will leave it to those on Midway Island or on the Midway in San Diego to, uh, to uh, uh, finish that story. In the end, the Japanese made one major mistake. In their operations order, they said that the United States lacked the will to fight. They were incredibly wrong, as proven by the Marines, the Navy, and the Air Force personnel who were on Midway Island. There was only one Medal of Honor awarded during that battle to Marine Captain Richard Fleming flying from Midway Island on the 5th of June. But there were over 200 Navy crosses awarded. And they went that the, the uh, this degree of heroism uh, and uh, valor uh, deserves the gratitude of the entire United States uh, because of what they did to change the course of the war and change the course of history. Thank you very much. Good morning. I'm Jim Kurth. I'm the acting director of the United States Fish and Wildlife Service. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank all of those who are joining us from across the United States and around the world on this auspicious and solemn day. On this small patch of sand and coral located approximately halfway between the west coast of the United States and the east edge of Asia, the United States Fish and Wildlife Service manages the Midway Atoll National Wildlife Refuge and National Battle Memorial. This is easily one of the most remote of the 566 units of our National Wildlife Refuge System. Our commitment to the fish and wildlife and their habitat here is accompanied by the honor and responsibility of managing the Battle of Midway National Memorial, which recognizes in perpetuity the importance of the Battle of Midway that took place over several days in June of 1942. We are proud to stand with the United States Navy to commemorate these historic and, and heroic efforts by sponsoring ceremonies across the United States today, particularly here in the company of two of the battle's veterans. Located in the heart of Papahanao Mokuakea Marine National Monument, this isolated Pacific Atoll was the epicenter of one of the most important battles in our nation's history and the turning point of World War II in the Pacific. The calm of the oceans and sky were replaced by the sounds and sights of ferocious warfare that history properly remembers for the commitment, steadfastness, and bravery. Success at the Battle of Midway reflects the actions of those who were here on those June days, on island, on ships, and in planes. It also reflects on many who contributed from afar, repairing warships, breaking codes, and working ceaselessly to mobilize the valiant front lines. Many served, many perished. We honor all who won the Battle of Midway 75 years ago, and we honor all the men and women of our armed services today who carry forward the tradition of duty and dedication for the safety and security of the United States of America. Thank you for the honor of being here today. I now introduce Rear Admiral Samuel J. Cox, United States Navy retired, who serves as the Director of the Naval History and Heritage Command and Curator of the Navy. Thank you very much.